step is the placing uh, placing order. So uh, when you chose your supplier and uh, you're thinking this is the right supplier and I would like to work with him, uh, the next step that you should move uh, to is placing order. And placing order means sample confirmation. So here our main message is that you need to provide an understanding of your ideal product to your supplier and your defective product, example for, of what you call a defect. Because uh, what you think is acceptable for you and what you think is a defect for you can be not a defect for your factory. They could be saying that, oh, you know, all other uh, customers, they're okay with this problem and I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, before actually going into that problem, before actually talking about the real defects in your product, you can set up uh, a common language with your supplier and you can tell them what is your ideal product and what is your defective product. So what you will call a defect. Uh, if you do this, it will help a uh, supplier already to understand your quality level and your expectations of the product. So when you confirm an, uh, a sample with your supplier, what, uh, what you need to do, you just don't need to say that, you know, I want this blue cup. Because uh, by blue cup, a uh, supplier can understand anything. It, uh, what you need to say is, I need a blue cup, uh, a blue ceramic cup with a paint and color number, this, 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 and wall thickness of this, this, this uh, millimeters, and coating thickness and glazing of this uh, millimeters, and so on. So you need to specify uh, what are your expectations of the product. And what you need to confirm is your product appearance and workmanship. So the visual uh, appearance of the product and to make sure uh, you also can coordinate them and you can tell them what are the problems that you don't want it, uh, your product to have. Like uh, could be some um, bubbles, you know, or black dots or, or some scratches on your product. So this is an example of what you don't want to have in your product. The yes, next step yeah. is... Uh, Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Something that we do um, just to give people kind of a tip is we will go into uh, PowerPoint because PowerPoint is very easy to kind of create um, specification uh, information because you can put the photo in there of the product and then you can make arrows and write things on there, point to various parts. But recently we placed an order on... Um, a cloth bin and it's very important to us that the corners are double stitched because we don't want those to fall apart and it's also very important to us that um, the handles hold at least 20 pounds consistently so we specified this in our documents and our supplier actually um, did a they made a little homemade load test where they stuck a bunch of books in it and hung it up and made sure you know but uh, but those same specifications is what I will hand off to the um, to the inspection team to say look I want you to check for the normal things that you check but I also need to make sure that this handle here is double stitched and these corners up here are sealed off so that they don't tear and um, you know, and all of those little aspects. And so you wanna take the time to point these things out to your supplier as well as your inspector so that they know what to look for and they know what the requirements are for your product. Yes, I will totally agree uh, with you. And uh, you need to make your specification as detailed as possible because they, if you don't tell them to do uh, something, uh, probably it will be neglected and so probably they will be not even thinking that they, it should, something that should be done. For example, uh, if you buy a cup, you also need to make sure that the marking and packaging is, uh, you know, the packaging is strong enough and the marking is consistent to the market that you are going to import it to. For example, if the packaging, you know, uh, if the factory wants to cut the cost, they will give you uh, a cheap quality carton box. But you could specify how, uh, what quality carton box it should be, like uh, the, the, the inner box. 
yeah, if the inner box is not strong enough, probably your product is going to be uh, broken during the shipment. And uh, this is not something that you would like to have. You also need to make sure the product safety and compliance to the standards. For example, this is a cup, and uh, this cup is used to, uh, in contact with food and liquids. Um, if the product is in contact with food and liquids, and actually human's mouth, you have to have uh, a test report for this product not containing any hazardous elements. And without this test report, you actually cannot uh, sell these products normally. So uh, when you're just talking to the factory, you need to make sure that your product will pass this test and uh, the factory will do this test by themselves to uh, confirm uh, the specification, to confirm that it's free of hazardous elements. Or you can do this test by yourself to have a test report for you. And uh, if you think that this is something that the factory will think about for you, uh, it's actually not true because uh, factories are dealing with lots of different markets. And uh, for example, you're from US, maybe they know about requirements for, for US uh, market, but maybe they don't know about requirements for Australian or New Zealand market. And all of these, are requirement, these requirements are different. And all of the standards are different. So you, before the placing of order, you actually need to make sure that uh, you have a standards that your product should comply to. And you actually uh, tell this, uh, requirements and standards to your supplier before you place the order. Yeah, and also there are different ways of how you can confirm and how uh, confirm the uh, product specification and how can you organize it. Amy just said about the uh, PowerPoint presentation is very good. I, I really like this idea. Yeah, also I just want to give you uh, some other ways how to confirm it. And one way is called uh, a component data form. So it's CDF. This uh, product data sheet in, is mostly used for electrical and electronic products. And as you can see, it's just a map of your product. So you can see your product and you can see the components used in this product. And you also can see the specifications for the components for, uh, used in this product. Because uh, uh, in, in many situations, the, the sample you can see at the Canton Fair or at any other fair, you know, you see this, this sample, you like it, you probably confirm it. But uh, in many situations, the product you receive, if it is electronic product, uh, it could be looking the same, but internal components are not the same, and uh, the supplier would make it a little bit cheaper so they can earn more money. Uh, and probably the quality will be worse than this, uh, the sample that you saw. So when you confirm the sample, you need not only confirm how the product looks like, but also what are the components inside and uh, what are the uh, details of these components as it's written here. Also, there is another way to confirm your uh, sample. It's called a tag pack. Tech pack, uh, uh, they're used mostly for apparel industry and uh, soft line industry. So here you can see it's also a map of your product and you can also see the overall product and different components of it. So, uh, usually for the tech packs, they will attach the um, fabric swatch to the tech pack to make uh, uh, the factory, uh, to give a, an understanding to the factory uh, of uh, the exact fabrics used in uh, in the products or uh, the exact fabrics, fabrics that you would like to be used in this product. Why is it important? For example, if you're creating your own uh, product and you're just searching for the supplier, you actually can uh, give them this document, just one document, and you can receive the quotation already based on all requirements that you give to them. So by submitting just one document to many different suppliers, you can get the exact quotation to exact item you want just from different suppliers. It's much faster uh, way of um, quotation, quotation requests. And also, for example, if uh, you create one item at several factories, let's say you have two factories that produce the same t-shirt, 
you want to make sure that this t-shirt is uh, the same. The quality of it is the same and performance of it is the same uh, as at one factory uh, as in another factory. So you can just give them one product sheet and they will uh, create the product already according to uh, this product sheet. And for example, for the apparels, uh, why is it also important? Here you can uh, submit the size chart to your supplier and you also can submit you know, the, the stitching and uh, some other details, accessories, uh, to coordinate this information to your supplier and make sure that they will create it as per the sizes you want. Because different su suppliers, they also deal with different markets. And I will tell you that M size in China and M size in US is completely different M size. You know, if I buy clothes uh, in US uh, M size for me, probably I have to buy it XL here in China. So it's a very big difference of understanding of the sizes. Uh, and if you want your products to be made for your market, you actually need to give your requirements to, to your supplier. And the tag pack is a good way to confirm this requirement. And that's basically it for the placing order state.